Can you hear? I think I'm online. This is Michael Roger. Michael Roger. Hello, hello. G'day, boys. Hey, how is everyone? How are we? Going well. Just a quick uh, visual well. and audio check. Can you all hear and see each other? Yep, I think so. Oh, we've just lost Evan. Oh, shit. You, you do hard boys better sort yourselves out. Hopefully, um, are we live yet? Hopefully, for the at home, we're coming through okay. We're going to put some headphones in. We're live, Michael. Lovely. <laughs> Evan, I um, I feel honoured, mate, to have the IPC Athletics World Champs commentary team. <laughs> part of, of part of. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm away, just about mate. to go back out to the track. But uh, oh, I'm very I've, good. I've, I feel a bit lost next to the two pros. They're rattling off names, and I just go, "Yeah, the Chinese athlete." And and Scotty Reardon's girlfriend. Oh yeah, yeah, Vanessa Lowe. Mm, she did well yeah. yesterday. Yeah, no, it's good, mate. You got to you got to play to your strengths, I always say. So um, so that's good. And I'm just doing a couple of little checks here as well. We've got the red light on, means we're recording. It's all a bit new, the old blab stuff. And uh, this is, I'd have to say. Uh, easily the first IPC world champs we've ever had a blab call for. I'd be very confident of that. So you boys are part of history. Great to have you on board. Good to be it's here. Great to be here. Yeah, excellent. Well, um, let's get things kicked off, guys. So I know you, you, you're busy. You got you got places to be. Um, so yeah, welcome to everyone that's that's joined us here. As I said, it's it's new technology, folks. Thanks for joining us. Uh, hopefully you can keep up, keep up with the pace of it all, and we're gonna. The whole aim of it is to have a, a coverage of uh, what's happening over there in Doha, and who better to have on the line than a couple of blokes that are over there in the thick of the action? Um, for those that are watching on the replay, welcome. Great to have you on board. This is the daily Aussie wrap of the Doha 2015 IPC Athletics World Champs, and uh, yeah, if you, if you can give us a little bit of a share, guys, that'd be great as well. Share out via Twitter or whatever sh- social platform you use. Uh, now or during the show or afterwards, whatever, that'd be great. We want to try and uh, get a bit of momentum with this throughout the the, uh, the comp and, you know, try and get some, um, you know, plenty of eyeballs knowing that, knowing, people knowing that this is happening. So uh, you can also leave a comment at any time. There's comments. You can leave questions. You can ask for Evan O'Hanlon's autograph uh, or ask him for a free coffee at some point. Um, I'd be getting rogue. Down there as... He's competing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right. Um, I'm a has-been. We'll get on to him. No, we'll get on. We'll get on to him very shortly. But, uh, um, boys, yeah, great. First of all, what's happening over there in in Doha? What's the vibe like uh, at the eighth? I think IPC World Champs so far. I'll start with you, Rogie. Yeah, well, it's uh, it's hot. It's hot. It's very warm here. Um, day two now. Um, the team environment, the camp before has been really good. I think. Um, Everyone's handling themselves really well. A lot, lot more professional than previous years, which is good to see. Um, got a bunch of new people as well, new, new athletes, which is good, and some, some older ones. But uh, the team vibe is really good. Everyone's positive and, and looking fit and ready to go. Obviously, um, last night had a great night with myself winning bronze and then uh, two gold medals to start off with is just, just amazing. We got two gold medals for the whole team, last world champs with Evan and Scotty, and we've started off day one with two, two, two goals already, so it's, it's pretty positive and exciting. Yeah, awesome. And um, we're going to get on to a, recapping the day one, uh, I guess, events from the Aussie Flame very shortly. But Evan, tell us, mate, a little bit of, I guess, disappointment. You're not out there competing, but you, you've got the microphone in the hand. How did that come to pass, mate? Yeah, a little bit disappointing to not be out there competing. And yesterday, having to watch my own race uh, go through in the 200 metres was, was interesting. But uh, as soon as I got injured, I just... Uh, emailed the boys at the International Paralympic Committee media and I said, look, I'm not going to be able to make it over to race, but if you guys need anyone to come over and help out, I'm happy to come. So they got me on board and I'm over here. It's uh, very different being uh, in the stand all all day because I don't think I've ever sat through a full session of athletics before. Last night, I was uh, getting pretty tired. And you're on um, every day, Sorry. There was talk about your commentary at dinner last night, Evan. There's um, <laughs> made a few comments and stuff. The team were uh, were uh, yeah, wondering where you got those lines from. <laughs> I'm coming over to the so, team hotel later today, so I'll uh, I'll ask for some feedback. Yeah, yeah, nice. It's, it's, we've got a long, long, long nine more days ahead of us, I reckon. I'm sure you'll get feedback whether you ask for it or not, Evan. So um, yeah, look out for that. 
So you're on every day, mate, every session, every day? Uh, yeah, well, I'll be a little bit flexible. Uh, they've got two professional uh, commentators here and they don't really need me. So I'm just there for, um, for special comments, which I've been making a lot of by the sounds of rogues. And otherwise, I'll be doing some other interviews. I'm going to the Australian Team Hotel this afternoon, live on Periscope for 20 minutes. I don't think I've ever done a 20-minute interview, and it's going to be live. Awesome. What time's that on, local time? Uh, for, for us, it's uh, 2.30 here in Doha, so I'm not sure what time so that is for you 10, guys. Yeah, 10.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Savings Time. Um, so oh, follow dear, people, be live. Jump on people are still going to be awake. I thought they were all going to be Mate, asleep well, in Australia. I was, <laughs> I, was going to go, I was going to go to bed, but I'll stay up to watch that. That sounds fantastic. <laughs> you thought this was it. If you thought this was entertaining, that'll that'll absolutely rate through the roof, I'd say. Whatever's on at ten thirty tonight. So um, Periscope, if you haven't seen that, jump on. We'll I'll share a link on our Twitter as well. But um, uh, that'll be the IPC Athletics account, I'm pretty sure, Evan. So yep. yeah, you follow that and nice work. The Aussie takeover. Good work, mate. <laughs> they think I'm gonna take over Twitter for a day on the IPC Twitter thing as well. I don't I don't uh, know what I can fill in for a day. Mate, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. You'll be, you'll be plugging your own cafe every half an hour, that's for sure. <laughs> I haven't mentioned it once um, yet, I don't think, have I? Mate. Co- co- well, so I, did well. see, uh, I, did, I did see an Instagram post of you uh, doing a sneaky delivery to Chad Paris. Oh, yeah, I did do that, yes. Righto, boys. Let's talk a little bit of business. The day one recap, I count 14 Aussies we had in action. As you mentioned, the double gold for the Aussie Flame and both in championship records too, which was quite telling. But Angie Ballard, she seemed to be uh, in blistering form. We've got a new hashtag for her. I've been working on the hashtags, boys. We've gone for uh, Power Ballard. So um, see what you think of that one. So Very nice, very nice. The, you've got the rest of the show to come up with your favourite Power Ballad or Power Ballard. And we'll get everyone to uh, put on the comments what their favourite power ballot is. But, yeah, Angie was untouchable. 29-33 to win gold in the T53-200. And then big Toddy Hodgetts. That would have been electric to be in the stadium to yeah. see that. The F20 shot put, cleaned it up 15-83 and, and gave it the, the uh, obligatory Hodgetts celebration, I hear. How was it? It's good to see uh, big Toddy back on the uh, top of the podium. He was, uh, he was very excited, of course, and um, he doesn't mind a celebration. Um, I talked to him talked to him this morning at breakfast and he's, um, he's still pretty pumped and, and looking forward to Rio. And um, Angie Ballard, her start was amazing last night. She um, she blitzed him just from the gun, so she was impressive. And it's good to see she's been in the game a long time and to get a gold medal like that was great and she's got a big program ahead of her here as well. Yeah, she's been at, at a number of IPC World Champs and uh, she said she uh, hasn't had the gold for a while, so... Hungry for, for more, and she, I think she's she's a world record holder over the one lap, and I think she's got the fifteen hundred coming up tonight. We'll get we'll get onto that a little bit later, but yeah, she could get a big swagger medals over there. And yeah. um, I I better throw in there as well. Speaking of hashtags, top of the to- top of the podium, Todd. I'm going to go for that one, Sam. So it was interesting. <laughs> it was interesting. I was up in the stand, and we we're doing the live stream. We didn't get much footage of uh, of Toddy's race coming through to us, so. Oh, sorry, race, throwing, coming through yeah. to us. And uh, all of a sudden, I just see this uh, Australian flag streaking down the side of the of the st- grandstand, upside down again. Uh, Toddy Hodgett, <laughs> second time round. Uh, London and Doha now, he's held the flag upside down. That was a good <laughs> celebration. Gets, gets a bit excited. Upside down. He climbed well, into the stand honor- at one stage. In honour of, in honor of Toddy Hodgett's, look what I can do here. I can, I can get this happening. And that is your basic upside down Todd Hodgett's flag. So there you go. Well done, Toddy. They'll be, they'll be, maybe maybe they'll that's be what the, the new New Zealand flag should be. They should just turn the flag upside down. Perfect. Perfect. I'd, I'd, pay, I'd pay that. <laughs> and uh, big shout out to all you people watching across the ditch. I'm sure there's plenty of them. Um, we're going to give them a little shout out later on as well. So stay tuned. You are watching Do Hard, the Aussie Flame wrap up from the IPC Athletics World Champs in Doha, Qatar, where it is a little bit sticky, they tell me, but uh, you've got a Doha nut, boys, they tell me. <laughs> Thanks for the laugh. Hey, um, if you're watching, down the bottom of the corners, you can see those two hands that are up like that. So how Blab works is that I can click on Evan and give you a bit of love. So that's just like me giving you a high five, essentially. All right. And there, Rogi, you get oh, something beauty. as well. So if, if you're... 
if you're watching at home, folks, and you're new to Blab, that's how that works. So, oh, okay, um, I see. Yeah, look, someone's yeah. There you go. Good that work. was me. So keep that them was coming. Me. Yeah, yeah. Good work, mate. Thank Roger, you. I love I don't you. Get to, to just... <laughs> Thanks, brother. Keep, keep the love going. And as we said, tell a little bird. That's that's what they say there. Get it on Twitter. You can click the button to share the link and tell all your mates. Now, the third medal, well, he's just above me there on the Blab screen. And uh, I'll tell you what, Rogie, I guess you, in all fairness, you would have liked a medal of a different colour, but a medal nonetheless. Yeah. yeah um, obviously, coming into to Doha World Champs, I was, you know, looking looking and confident that I could take it out and win gold. But um, it wasn't my day in the, the two other competitors who also beat me in, in Lyon a couple of years ago, had the better of me again. But um, a bronze medal is a bronze medal. And I'll sit down with the coach over the next few days and, you know, see what we could have done better or, you know, what, what happened. But, yeah, it was very weird. Weird, my just body didn't respond. And usually, you know, I went through 800 last night in 205 and usually that's a pretty, pretty comfortable pace for me and I don't know what happened. I just, yeah, the body just didn't respond how it usually does. Yep, yep. Well, mate, you still got up on that podium. Um, it's been a bronze career for you at the IPC uh, World Champs. That's three of them now. So you're, yep. you're, you're the bronze Aussie. And, um, <laughs> but, but that gold, and, uh, and we'll talk a little bit about that shortly because I want to dig a bit deeper um, as, you know, a bit more about the race and, and how things are going for you in general. But just to keep going with uh, some of the other highlights, boys, from day one for the Aussie Flame, I, I, I make it seven more uh, top eight finishes including 17-year-old Sarah Walsh, sixth and a new Aussie and Oceana record in the T44 long jump, breaking her own records. Um, did you see, happen to see uh, much of Sarah in action? Yeah, I got a little I bit saw, of I saw her, um, You go, Rogues. Yeah, I saw, I saw, um, I saw one of her jumps and um, it, she looked really good. Like she's, she's, she's looking, looking like a really athlete, an upcoming athlete, and she's been working really closely with Brett Robinson, which, which I think is fantastic from uh, Sydney. And I think she's definitely one to watch in the future. She's got a really bright future and, you know, she'll take a lot out of this. Yeah, awesome. Big O, what was your take on it? Yeah, I got a little bit of footage over in the, on the live stream and we were able to do a little bit of commentary there. Her parents were in the stand, so that's really nice for her to be able to come to world championships and uh, have her parents there watching. And yeah, she's one of the young new Australian athletes. I've said a couple of times on the live stream that we've got a really young team and it's an opportunity for us to blood a whole lot of athletes before Rio next year and see, let them see how it is to compete on the world stage and be able to compete under pressure. And I think she stood up pretty well uh, with like a good jump for her and six in the world that like, you can't complain with that. Yeah, and, the, and those new Aussie, Aussie and Oceana records as well. Now, <clears throat> Lindsay Sutton, I believe it's his birthday today. I just saw a photo of him on Twitter in a silly hat. Uh, <laughs> he, got, he got eight in the, uh, the shot put, the F20. Please pass on happy birthday to him from us all. We will. Very good. Uh, Russell Short, now the, the line last night, he's a man that's not short on experience. He's been to every single one of the IPC world champs. You can use all these lines, Evan, if you like, on the call. I'll just write that one down. Very good. Uh, F12, F12 shot put. So Russell Short, an absolute stalwart um, of para sports and uh, bagging the seventh place there. So well done. Sammy Carter in the, in the chairs, uh, fifth in the final of the 200 metres. So a good top six finish there. I was texting his um, uh, Dorsey, Andrew Dawes. He reckoned the top six was going to be a great achievement for Sam. So well done there to the Queenslander. Uh, the first redhead. Um, to get a top eight finish in the Aussie Flame. I think the Redheads should get a special mention. Being the Flame, it makes sense. <laughs> they should. They should. <laughs> They're a special breed. They are. They are. Just ask Mossy. He's not on tonight, so we can we can slag him. We'll um, have Brad Scott. Then, Brad Scott yeah, before. Brad Scott, the other red ah. will be out in action today, I think. Of, of course. Of course. And uh, the, the women's 238, 100 metres. You spoke of youth there, Evan. Well, uh, Ella Party took out fifth. Erin Cleaver, 15-year-old. She's from my neck of the woods here in Newcastle. She's in year 10. Uh, she came sixth, got a PB. And Taylor Doyle also with a PB in seventh. So uh, not in the medals with the girls there, but great to see them uh, in, a, in a good show there in the final of that T38-100. Yeah, the girls ran well and uh, competed well under pressure. It's pretty t pretty tough competition. The Sophie Hahn, who ran away with it, she's got a, had a PB previously of 13.1, and she's run 12.6-something on the day. So 
think, you know, yeah. you talk about breaking barriers, like, oh, I want to go under 13. She's just done it by half a second. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it is very incredible. So, um, boys, what that brings us to is the all-important day one medal tally. Now, um, I just want to just bring it up here and hopefully you can see. So, you see that okay? Oh, official name there. in front of us. So there we go. Yeah, this is this is straight. This is my. I got it faxed from um, the president of the IPC Athletics. So he sent this straight to me. And uh, there you go, the Doha medal tally. So China out in front, uh, and they got ten medals total. The Poms four gold as well as China uh, seven total. The Yanks six total. The Germans four. There they are, the mighty Aussie flame. Look, to be yeah. honest, though, to be honest, the Germans do have more medals than us, but we could take Vanessa Lowe's and add that to ours, I think. I heard that on your call, mate. Yeah, well, is, what's the go there? Are we getting her a passport? Well, let's, I, I, let's start a hashtag. Yeah. Bring low Done. down down low. Down low. Down under. Bring, yeah, low down under. Low down under. Perfect. And then here's to all our Kiwis. There they are, equal 19th. They got the one silver, that's, so... That's not bad for the Kiwis. Yeah, you know, they've yeah. got a team, I think, about eight, so... Well, I'll tell you what, they haven't come over here real focused. They're too busy thinking about their flag, and uh, I, I don't see them having much success at all. So, anyway... That's probably um, their worry. They don't want to get a goal just because they don't know which flag to put up, which well, flag to celebrate. The, Todd Hodgetts will have to help but, them out. But, well, he will. <laughs> he will. Toddy Hodgetts will be there on standby with his upside-down Aussie flag. But the, the Qatar Sports Club have told me they don't know what, what's going on. They've given away the old New Zealand flag, um, thinking that it's being thrown out. So I don't know what's going to happen if they do get a gold, but um, you can keep an eye on that, boys. So, yeah, there you go. Now, part of um, what we want to try and do on Doha is go in a little bit deeper with some of our athletes here tonight. And it's great to have you on board, Evan. We, we might pick your uh, life to pieces a little bit at another time, but we're going to go deep on the rogie. And uh, Rogues, I, I came up with another hashtag for you last night. I don't know what you think of it, but Rogue Train. So sort of, you know. Yeah, I don't mind that. You know, I just thought I, d- I had my um, I had my Strava account as Rogue Trader. Oh, I don't mind that. So Rogue Train. Yeah. Rogue Train's good as well. No, Rogue Trade is good. So we'll we'll pay that. But just a little uh, quick bio on the Rogue, the Rogue Trader. We'll stick with that. Two times Paralympian, three times world champs, medalist now, national and world T46 1500 metre record holder, current male AA uh, Athletics Australia Para Athlete of the Year, and self confessed failed tomato cutter to throw into that as well. <laughs> so, nice little revealing uh, interview you did recently. Especially, on, those, um, especially those cherry tomatoes. Mate, they'd be, they'd be a real handful, I'd reckon. Oh, real they're, they're ch- shockers. I've chucked them. I chuck them in my salad hole now. <laughs> I'm going to do that from now on in your honour. Thanks, mate. Speaking of which, the blab the blab app isn't very Paralympic friendly, really. It's got two hands. Tell me. It's got well, two hands on the little the clapping thing. thing. Rogues, Rogues does the, the one-handed thing. clap. This is the thing. Um, I can... We're going to have to we're going to have to sort sort that out. Yes. Yeah. Here we go. I didn't this get a chance. Need, Rogues. I'll, I didn't get a chance to screw my other Paralympic uh, app idea, which was, you know, Tinder's very important to everybody at the moment. Uh, it's on trend. I was thinking of making Blinder for blind athletes, where instead of seeing photos, you just get to hear the person's voice. <laughs> hey, hey, that's, in, that's, uh, that's sensational. I'll tell you what, that'll take off. Right? Imagine in that, Rogi. Very, very good, Evan. I didn't even get any good. love for that. Thanks. No, no. Oh, hang on. Get you some love. Well, Rogue yeah, can good. only give you the one. I've given the. I've got. I've, Rogue has I've to give twice as many. <laughs> That's right. He's busy doing it over and over like this. He's, he's very talented. Um, so look, you're watching Doe Hard. If you if you've just walked in on this and you're wondering what's going on, Evan O'Hanlon and uh, Michael Rogue has taken over the Athletics Australia account. I hope they know about that, Rogi. You've just kidnapped them. They do, yeah, they do. Yeah, Cody, Cody was in here before, giving me instructions, but uh, I told him I've got it under control and I might, might even help him out over the next 10 days, I reckon. He, I reckon he needs a bit of a hand. Yeah, yeah, no, perfect. No, everyone could do with a bit of hand when it comes to social media. And look, you, as I said, you guys are on the cutting edge of, um, of live streaming technology here. Forget Periscope. This is Blab and this is the future. 
it's they've been they're telling me it's a cross between the Brady Bunch and Periscope. So the way we've got these little windows happening, it's quite nice. So, um, but there you go. Now, Ray, I want to get a bit deeper on, with you, with you, mate, and um, don't take that don't take sure. that the wrong way. But mate, tell us a little bit about <laughs> your background in running. How how you know how have you come to be one of the world's best uh, fifteen hundred meter runners? Yeah, well, I guess um, it all started in um, in Langhorne Creek, where I grew up, um, about forty five minutes southeast of Adelaide. Um, in primary school and um, and high school, I was always really good at cross country, and I love cross country. And used to give 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 most people in the in the school and the in the Fleur Open intro touch up, and it all started there. Didn't really train much for running. I was just a keen keen Aussie Aussie rules player for the Langhorne Creek Hawks and. Played cricket and table tennis and tennis and you name it, I was playing it and just kept fit through there, and sort of was started to make state teams for South Australia, and it all went from there. And I remember in year six, actually, Neil Fuller came to my primary school and um, for a bit of a, a, a talk, and he came and I didn't really know who Neil Fuller was was until then. He came. Neither does anybody else he, that you're he, talking he's... to now. <laughs> no, sorry, Neil. <laughs> He, he, Neil Fuller is uh, one of the legends of the sport, um, and he and he came to our school and, and he said, "Oh, you can go to the Paralympics one day." And I said, "No, I want to go to the Olympics." And he sort of looked at me, going, "Who's this kid?" And um, it all started from there. And yeah, in two thousand five, I um, I took it up seriously, got a full time coach, and, and it started from there. And and obviously, made Beijing was my debut. So that was that's a bit of background. Yeah, awesome, mate. No, cheers for that. And uh, look, I want to go straight to, as you know, we're pretty direct here on Doe Hard. I want to know the arm story and I want to hear uh, the one that I heard the other day because I quite like that one. Oh, yeah, I lost my arm. The old the old shark attack. No, it was actually a, a crocodile up, up in Northern Territory on a fishing fishing charter with my twin brother, Chris. We went to, went to pull, pull this little uh, trout in and a big croc come and snap! <laughs> Took my arm off. Uh, no, no. I, lo- I love telling people that story, but I was actually born like it. This hour popped out. Your twin ate it. Um, yeah, yeah. Chris, Christopher got hungry in the womb, so. Yeah, so. good bloke. Yeah. No, no, good bloke he is. He just and had what? his first child, actually, so shout out to him, little Henry Chase Roger. G'day, little rogue. Congratulations. A future, yep. a future rogue trader. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very good. And what? Yeah. So that's, that's what was the line, mate. That's he, a bit of the arm story. He, he came out first, and that's the only time he's beaten you at anything. Is that right? Yeah, that's the only thing he's beaten me at life was coming out two <laughs> minutes and seventeen seconds before me. Oh, that's so, a yeah. That's a hand. Lost that race. That's a handy eight hundred rep. There you go. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So he just got me there. Especially so at age zero. We've been, we've been best, well. That's right. Yeah, we've been best mates ever since. So, Rogie, with all the things you've achieved in the sport so far, I want to know for you what's your what's been your best achievement? What's been the, the one you've been most proud of? Yeah, um, definitely the world record in Boston in June this year was was very special, and to to run sub three fifty was um, a dream come true. I never never believed I could do it until about a year ago when my coach Philo Saunders, you know, just got me running really well. So that three forty eight in Boston was was one of the best days of my life, actually. Tell me, what's this unratified rubbish? Yeah, so so with the with the um, the I, the world records for the IPC, you need you need to have it as an IPC sanctioned event, right. which which we can write to the IPC to tell them which events we want sanctioned, yep. um, and all all state state and national events get um, get a sanction. But unfortunately, the one in Boston wasn't officially ah. sanctioned by the IPC this year. Yeah, right. So I guess it's an unofficial world record. I just haven't got that certificate. Yeah, yeah. No, well, mate, we'll definitely. But, yeah. But we, we, yeah. The times there. That's my personal best, yep. and that's that's the world record as far as we're concerned. Yep. But um, I guess, yeah. Looking forward, we'll we'll get a maybe you know ACT state champs or one of the tour meets in Australia this year. We'll um we'll get it set up and sanctioned and, and do it officially. Yeah, excellent. Actually, up here in Newcastle, where I live, mate, um, in New South Wales, I hold a, a monthly mile event it's called the Maryville Magic Mile. I'm, I'll be riding to the IPC on Monday to get that sanctioned. <laughs> and I'm going to invite you up here. And if you set, you set yourself a, a mile world record, then we're, we're going to claim it. So I'll make sure that's Yeah, I'm, I might get my good mate Guy Walters to, uh, to pace me. Mate, you're, using, you're using the words good mate a little bit uh, liberally there. <laughs> 
Yeah, he's everyone's good mate. Oh, of course. Big shout out to Guy. He, he would, I know he'd for sure he wouldn't be on here. He'd be out um, busy somewhere else. So, mate, uh, yeah. let's go back to last night. And, um, you know, I guess you've, you've probably tossed and turned over it a bit last night and you already talked a little bit about the race. But what about the boy from Angola going out 60 seconds? Um, that was interesting. Yeah. What, what was going through your mind? Yeah, it, it was it was interesting. It, it didn't really catch me off guard because I knew I knew he was a you know four four twenty runner or something. Yep. So I wasn't worried about him. But what did catch me off guard a little bit was I was quite surprised the Brazilian went after him as early as he did, um, because I thought you know I thought everyone would have known that Ian Golden was going to come back to us, but the Brazilian um, took it up pretty pretty quickly after three hundred meters. So. I think um, I think that young bloke got taken up on a stretcher as well after the race. Jeez. So I hope he's all right. Wow. Um, Sixty second first lap and ended up running four nineteen. There's a PB for him as well though. Was it? I reckon he's got four ten in here. Yeah. 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 You think so? Fix up the pacing a little bit. Um, and so those couple of boys, you know, you're very familiar with them. Uh, Samir, the Al- Algerian, and Perez da Silva, the Brazilian. The Brazilian's going to be pretty fired up in his home track in uh, in a year. Yeah. Or yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I'm used to those boys, and and I've raced them a few times now. And coming into Rio, the Brazilian, I think Phil I was saying last night, he reckons definitely the Brazilian's the one to watch out. The Algerian Samir, he's a, he's a little bit older, and I didn't think he looked as fit this this time around as last time around. It'll be interesting to see what he's like in um, in Rio. But they're both class athletes, and um, I know that. But um, you know, on my day, I know I can beat them, and and that's that's going to be the goal. Big, so, big question, mate. Yeah. Big question, mate. I know you've, you've yeah, you've, you've probably tossed and turned and, and replayed the race a bit in your head. But would you, if you had your time, go back and keep the beard? Yeah. Well, <laughs> that could have been my strength, Robbo. I, I so. didn't want to say anything, mate, because I didn't want to jinx you. I just thought, Gee, but you did anyway. Looking beard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kurt, Fern- Kurt Fernley was quite devastated oh, that I get rid of it, actually. He doesn't mind a bit. Well, I, th- I heard um, so. Kurt told me, he said, oh, you reckon Rogie kept the offcuts and you reckon I could get it, get the get him in a little bag because, you know, he loves to, yeah. you know, he loves a bit of facial hair. Yeah, so yeah. Maybe, I, maybe I might just start growing it for Rio. Mate, do it. Bushman beard, I reckon. Yeah, could be the go. 345. I thought the, I thought the fresh, clean shave would do it for me. It would, would get me over the line, but uh, yeah. not to be. Yeah. No, the rougher the better, I reckon. That, that all fits with the croc story too. <laughs> Maybe I'll go with that. Yeah. Oh, I'm telling you, mate. We, we, here at Blab, at, uh, at Head, Blab HQ, we can, we can you know, get your career going any way you like. We've got hashtags. Oh, we've got you know, stories. Yeah. We've got it all sorted. Now, uh, you spoke about Rio. So, yeah, not too far away uh, now. Tell us, and Evan, you might be able to jump in here as well. Tell us, the athletes are, are looking to qualify for Rio, but the it's the actual, like Athletics Australia gets a couple of slots if you come first or second. Is that how it works? Yeah. So in Paralympic sport, we don't, uh, from World Championships onwards, basically, every year, every four years before the Paralympics, there's a quota spot system that's introduced. And every uh, gold medal, uh, for Athletics Australia, they then receive a quota spot to have people on the team. So the number of gold medals directly correlates to the number of quota spots we'll end up with for the Rio Games, and that means how many athletes we can take to the Rio Games. So it's not if we get two gold medals, we have two athletes, but the yep. results down the board also count, um, but the gold's worth the most in terms of quota spots. Yep, 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 yep. So we, we, it's not as clear cut as saying, right, you do a certain stand or you do a certain, you win and you're off to Rio sort of thing. Well, it is quite clear in the, in the, like, for example, Roger has already run his qualifier for Rio and he's done yep. a, a third place performance at world championships. His quota spot doesn't necessarily go directly to him, but because he's yep. done yep. the qualifier, he's more than likely to go, like he will go. Yep. Yeah. yeah, and here we go. I'll give him a few extra hands, and that'll that'll just tip the selectors over. I'm sure they're all watching. You <laughs> beauty. So there you go. They, they said to, yes. they said to me before we went on, if Roger doesn't get 250, um, yeah, then <laughs> raise the bat. <laughs> then he might be struggling. So yeah. Jeez, you're, you're uh, lagging behind there. We better give you some love. Oh, I just realized right. I, I, when you said that, I just realized there's a counter, and then it makes us look poor. Now, make sure you share share it out, boys. Have you figured out how to hit the share button yet? Oh, share it out all, to mate. all your millions of fans. This this stuff's all new to me. I, Are um, you on the desktop? Yeah. No, I'm on an iPad. 
Uh, I better, I better get my old mobile because Cody's Sweet. giving me strict instructions not to touch his computer no, too heavily. Oh. Yeah, well, you're on the ass. ass he's, off. We'll get, we'll get you Cody's, Cody's under strict instructions not to turn his laptop off at night because they're worried it won't turn exactly. on again. So he's just, yeah, well, <laughs> he's having to put it in the cupboard at night so that it doesn't keep him awake. <laughs> it's a nice, l- nice luminous glow. Yeah. Well, speaking about social media, while we're on it, and, uh, and thanks very much for um, giving us the Michael Roger story there, but where do we follow you, Rogie? When you're not hijacking Athletics Australia's Twitter, how do we get you? Well, I'm on Twitter myself, um, at Michael Roger, and on Instagram, at mroger. So, very good. Yeah, get on board, guys, and follow me towards Rio. And if you have- Hopefully I can... Um, Redemption in Rio and try and get that gold medal. Perfect. Rio, Red- um, Rio Redemption. There's another hashtag. And- I think it's given me more. It's given me more hunger, hunger and desire to win that gold medal after last night's performance because I know I'm a lot better than that. Yep. Yep. No, awesome, mate. Well, we're all behind you and we'll be cheering hard for you. And uh, courtesy of Evan O'Hanlon, and he won't see, won't have seen this coming, <laughs> but um, get used to it, Rogie, because that there, that's Tom. Now, Evan, Evan you've been over there, but. Now, this is Tom. He's the mascot for the 2016 Rio Paralympics. And Evan was kind yeah. enough to um, – I, I was after the, the little mascot, and I'll still get one of them, but this is even better, I think. The mascot hat. So there you go. What do you Rio, first take on it? Suits you, mate. The yeah, Rio yeah. organising committee couldn't get me a mascot. They said, look, we know Mossy and Robbo really want one, but we don't actually want to give them one. So uh, I argued and argued and then finally got them to get me a hat. And uh, hat. so I get, got you one yeah. of each of them. Yeah, uh, and the matching – the matching thongs as well, mate. I've been, I've, I've wear them to bed. They're sensational. Thank you. You've got a thong. Yes. Yeah, flip flip flops <laughs> as they call them over here. Pardon me. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Moss, Mossy and Robbo have got matching thongs. Yes, that's right. Um, matching thongs. They match our hat. <laughs> matching but thongs saw, and matching dog hats. Perfect. perfect. I saw another Sorry. copy of your hat getting around yesterday at the track. It was uh, Malu from. The Netherlands, the Blade Babe, she was rocking ah, one. And I thought, wow. now looking at you, I think she maybe wears it a little bit better. A little, a tiny bit, tiny yeah. bit. But has she got 167 high fives on Blade? She definitely doesn't. doesn't. She does. <laughs> 69, look at that. Oh, it's going through the roof. Um, oh, he's gone I'm, past I'm me. Saying, oh, look out. Raise the bat. Thank you, boys. Um, <laughs> surely, though, this would have to be the only one of these hats, only one of its kind on, on mainland Australia, wouldn't it? I, w- I would say so. I haven't seen one of them before. I would say so. Have to. There's, only, there there's only one one uh, souvenir shop in Rio at the moment, and that's at the Paralympic Committee uh, headquarters. So they're they're like hen's teeth. Yeah. Wow. Well. Um, yeah. If, you, if you're over there, anyone watching, love you to get us a mascot. But for the time being, I actually reckon this is better. The mascot that you can wear on is a hat. Like often you can't do much with mascots, but to Keep the sun off. That's perfect coming into summer. Yeah, perfect. And the, um, yeah, so the monkey one's pretty good too, but I'll just keep that there for now. But yeah, great work. And um, just to get you a little bit more fired up, obviously, there you go. I didn't, you beauty. I didn't really want to put that as the backdrop because the Brazilian beat you last night, Rogi. So I didn't, I thought yeah. I'd be sensitive to you. <laughs> but, but, you but you got it out anyway. Sure. And there's a little one. Put it, maybe we should put that one upside down. I can do that. Todd Hodges, I like it. Everything's upside down for Big Todd. Hey, um, Big Toddy. Thanks he'll for, he'll thanks be on the medal ceremony today, so hopefully he does his uh, famous moonwalk up the podium. That's what he did. Oh, in yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, I think he's on at four o'clock, isn't he, Evan? Yeah, I think so. Hopefully I'll be out there to be able yeah. to commentate that. But, boys, I might have to go soon because I'm supposed to be at the track right. at one thirty. Doha traffic. Perfect, mate. Perfect. Takes half, it took me half an hour to get 500 metres down a road the other night. Yep. Get amongst it. I'm going to read out in a sec. Once you go, I'll, I'll do the uh, coming up for day two. But quickly, what's caught, what's catching your eye, Big O? What do you reckon? Uh, what are you predicting for the Aussies for day two? Well, we got the big name of Kerr Fernley coming up on day two. So he's in there with uh, Jake Lappin and Richard Nicholson in the 1500 <laughs> the, metres for T. The, T oh, there he is there. Look at him. The only member of the team to have written a book about himself. I thought there you were going you to say the only member Get of the team to have a portrait, and I was going to say, "Well, hang on, hang on." No, no, I, no, no, uh, no. An, an artist actually did an impression of myself this year, uh, but yes, he, he's the only one to have. With your clothes on? Oh, uh, what do you reckon? No, I, I was with my clothes hoping, on. Don't worry. No, uh, just a headband. That'd be fetching. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we go. also got Reed McCracken coming up in the T thirty four four hundred meters, and that's a big rivalry with uh, the Tunisian in that event. 
So the Tunisian holds the world record, but Reed's been chasing him down and they've had a, had a to and fro for the last couple of years. So that, that one should be pretty good. And uh, Claire Kiefer makes her debut in the T41 discus. So that should be very interesting as well. There's big throws in that event, big throws for, for them. And uh, Dion Kenzie and Brad Scott will be out in the 800, I believe, as well. Beautiful. Uh, no, Brad. No, Brad no, Scott. Brad. No, Brad. Jeez, okay. Look, it makes me look like I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Sorry, mate. No. I just see the so, event. Brad... I just saw the event and guessed that Brad w- would be there, but actually he's a T37. Yep. Beautiful. And uh, Isis Holt, one to watch for, the youngest member of the team, 14 years old, coached by Coach Nick Wall down in Victoria. She's the world record holder. Keep an eye on that name. It's a probably a little bit of a touchy name over there in the Middle East. It's not a, um, a strategy by the UN. It is, in fact, an athlete's name. So there you go, if you, you catch that. Look, we, now that you've mentioned it, we're probably being followed by the AFP. Yeah, yeah. AFP are so, probably on Blab. <laughs> hadn't, even, hadn't even thought of that connection. But no, going for, um, for the young Victorian, and that's one, she's one of three in uh, the T35-200. So that's going to be fantastic. Evan, you got to go, mate. We'll let you and go. Ange Ballard, Ange Ballard, and Maddie uh, back on the track as well today. So, Ange Ballard, you've pretty much, you've pretty much nailed it. She's awesome. got a fire extinguisher. I've told them to get a fire extinguisher to, to have an onboard fire extinguisher for her because she's on fire. <laughs> she is, mate. She is. And what's your favourite uh, power Ballard? Quickly before you go. I'm not much of a Ballard listener. I'm more of a, a, a hip hop man myself. But okay. I'd probably, I'll probably just go for an easy one and go uh, ACDC um, or any of the ACDCs will be fine because I can't really think of a song right now and you're making me look long, really silly. No, no, no. Long way to the top. Not, long way to the that's, top. That's the one. Beautiful. Yeah, cool. Rogie, what about you, mate? Power Ballard? Power Ballard. I'll go with ACDC too. Stairway, was it Stairway to Heaven? <laughs> Led Zeppelin. Just say, stay, away to, stay away to heaven. Yeah, beautiful. And I'll throw, <laughs> I'll throw in there every rose has it has its thorn. Uh, poison classic. Lovely. So, so there you go. Um, but yeah, folks, fifteen Aussies coming up, uh, kicking off from midnight Australian Eastern Daylight Saving Time. As Re- as uh, Big O said, there, Reed McCracken kicking us off. Alberto Campbell, another good one to watch out for. He usually wears the pink headband. He's got rid of that. Got the gold top. That's right. He's got a nineties hip hop inspired haircut. I'm loving it. Beautiful, beautiful. Dion Kenzie. Uh, in the heats, and, and that's for a final as well, Alberto Campbell, the Queenslander, 400-metre T20 final, so that's the yep. bling. Uh, you've got the T54 boys in the 1,500-metre heats, Kurt and Co., and the women's as well, Matty Di Rosario, Angie Ballard, that's all happening around 3 a.m. Uh, Australian Eastern Daylight Saving Time, the T35 200 heats, three of our girls there, Carly Beatty, T47 long jump, Nicole Harris, F20 shot put, and the White Tiger bringing us home, T30, yes. T13 100, See, I was, I was going Back through my seven. notes. I was going through my notes, my running list of today before we got on air, and I didn't get to the White yep. Tiger, and I didn't want to no. say the White Tiger's on because I hadn't yep. definitely seen it in the program. He's on. Didn't want to look silly. Folks. But he, he would definitely be too. my highlight, especially because he's going to light up the night. The Car- Car- Carly Beatty's on yeah. today as well, I think, in the F46 long, long jump. Yep, 4.02 a.m. I've got her. Australian, uh, Sydney time. A big yep. chance. Yep, yep. And she's big on social media too. I saw she's liking some of my Instagram posts, I think. So thanks, she'll Carly. Be, yeah, she'll be good at her. Yeah, yeah, excellent work. And uh, look, that's basically a wrap, boys. So thanks very much for joining us. Folks, if you if you um, want to catch the action, jump on paralympic.org and you can hear Evan O'Hanlon for the next nine days. It's going to be special. We're hosting the stream from mossyandrobbo.com. So it's everything you need there as well. But Athletics Australia has a, a mountain of information. Make sure you follow their Twitter for all the Aussie updates throughout the night. It's not a great time to be watching uh, the Aussie flame, but you will be certainly rewarded for getting up in the early hours. And look, the Rugby World Cup's been on anyway lately, so what's what's a bit more sleep lost? Um, the Aussie flame will light up your night. That's it. That's it. Love that. And on that note, I'm gonna we're going to bid you farewell. If you can, share out the link. If you're watching on the replay, share it with all your friends. We're going to do it again tomorrow night. We might be able to get... The big O back, and we'll get some of our other Aussie Flame guests on. But round of applause, Evan O'Hanlon, Michael Roger, and uh, get on board, guys. Thanks, boys. Go get Thank on. you, thank you. All right, I'm going to run to the track. See you, boys. That's it. And remember, do hard or do home. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give Thanks, you some boys. love for that one. Uh,
Oh, thank you. Well See fine. ya. Bye. Right, uh, thanks, guys. Catch up. Quite long. All right. Thanks very much for watching, guys. We'll see you tomorrow night, 8.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Saving Time. We're going to try and do this every night of the IPC World Champs. And uh, you've been sensational. Stay tuned. <laughs>